Hey guys, John here. I have another spooky patch for you, seeing as it's almost Halloween. Now this one I was kind of inspired by a theremin and also kind of a haunting type of voice, which is why I call it Haunting Voices. I would have called it Haunting Voices Theremin, but that's kind of a lot of words for one patch. So without further ado, this is kind of what it sounds like. Here we go. like that reverb tail that's pretty cool huh so that was me just kind of freestyling it there i didn't really feel like i programmed something in there for it but anyway long story short this one's not too complicated to make we're going to be using two operators here but on our main tab we're going to be using five orders of unison here and the pans are going to be 100 percent the volume 75 the pitch uh the unison pitch 72 percent the sub is at zero and the phase 13 percent a small little value there and the envelope variation also going to be zero which I didn't notice here until now, two times over sampling is very important. So make sure to turn that on if it is not. So moving on here, the pitch in the center is gonna be zero. First operator here, let's dive into this one. So first thing is this pitch here. So this pitch envelope and the pitch LFO. So the interesting kind of concept with this here is that with this pitch here, it's kind of doing a little bit of in harmonic, I guess, pitch changes. So once this plays, this is kind of doing the portamento. Now, if you don't know how to do portamento in Citrus, you, you generally want to click on the porta, but it's not necessarily going to work. That's the first step. What you really got to do is go to the operator and then the pitch envelope, and then you have to right click the second dot here and then put it as the decay. Kind of a long process, not really a big fan of how that works, but that's how you make the portamento. Moving on is going to be the LFO. So it starts off a little, or not a little bit flat here, and it kind of curves into a little bit of portamento. So when we first hit a note, it doesn't really get into the portamento until we, or the vibrato until we hold it down. Because it's kind of how almost a singer or maybe the, the theremin would kind of work this first kind of a more flat tone and then the portum or the, uh, the vibrato kind of kicks in with the pitch changes. <laughs> we can kind of see that here in the spectrum view, how there's this little block here of straight, of straight line. And then it kind of just does that triangle shape that we drew in here. So you kind of definitely want to get this to the tempo cause it's going to make a little bit more sense. And yeah, that's kind of what the thought process behind that. And this one is going to be also center. So something I noticed about making this patch here is that the DC offset was kind of a problem. So I centered a lot of these, these operators and I also did the center here in the, in the main page here. So if I turn this off, you can see down here how much it sinks down and strays from the center. And you want to kind of keep this on to kind of keep the waveforms more so in the center. So it's kind of sounding better and it's not overdriving your speaker in, in the wrong direction too much. So moving on to operator number two, this is just going to be a sine wave. The first one's a pulse wave. The second one's a sine wave. So if we listen to the second one by itself, you're like, what is that? That's literally just a little bit of noise here. As you can see, this, this uh, noise slider is all the way up. It does look like a sine wave because that's how it started. But with a patch like this, you kind of need this kind of background noise, this kind of grit to it, maybe a tape saturation kind of analogy sound. So that's the thought process behind this operator number two. So operator number two is going to filter number two, thought it was appropriate, and it's barely in the mix. If we kind of play some notes, we might not even be able to hear it. Maybe you have really good hearing, but it's very low and it's very intentional low because it's too loud, it's too much. So this is gonna be 6%. This, I'll turn this up to what it sounds like. So it's literally just noise, but at 6%, it kind of gives a little bit of flavor to that sound. And it's going to be on a bandpass, and I kind of just went to the cutoff frequency, and here it's 6% and a lot of resonance, which is kind of more so the bandwidth of it, but kind of finding that right spot of sound that I felt was most appropriate for this patch. So if we turn these off here, I can just leave the filter on, but this is uh, operator number one. <laughs> And the effects kind of make it cool, but it doesn't sound necessarily as spooky without the noise in the background. And with the added noise, it kind of gives the reverb a little bit richer tail to work with. So diving into our effects here, 
We have some chorus, six voices of our chorus here, and then chorus depth is gonna be two, the speed 100%, the delay is gonna be zero, the spread is gonna be 0%, the chorus cross 0%, and the volume 71%. We have a little bit of delay going on here. It's gonna be serial, tempo, and on because we want this going down this chain because it hits the reverb and it sounds a lot better with the, de with the delay getting fed into the reverb. So moving on to that, we have the feedback level 50%, the time at three, the stereo offset is zero, and then the volume 83%, and it's on a normal setting. For our reverb, it's gonna be B for the bright. It's gonna be on, tempo is gonna be off for this one. Low cut is at about 411 because you kind of want to cut off a lot of that low end there, especially with a long reverb tail like this. You really want to cut it cut it out. And then 5.9 kilohertz for the high cut, and then the pre-delay is going to be about 70-ish or so uh, milliseconds. Room size, about 61, and then the diffusion, give or take 64. The reverb decay, 2.4, 2.3 seconds around that area. The high dampening, 3.7K. And then the volume is gonna be 26%. And then right here, it's about 62%, but that's really to flavor, really to taste to see how you like this sound. And if you notice here in the main, I have this Mod X controlling the filter. So, so all the way down. So doing that filter cutoff with a lot of reverb kind of almost pushes the, the the sound away from you when the Mod X is down, and it kind of brings it closer to you as the knob kind of gets louder. So this is going to be tied to the cutoff Mod X here on the first filter, and we have this shape going from the bottom to the center here as well. So that's kind of the thought process behind that. Filter 2 does have some wave shaping on, so if we click this, this is going to be the shape we have, and the amp is gonna be all the way to the top to get a little bit of that extra distortion through that noise. And that's pretty much this patch in a nutshell. If I missed anything, you can always download this patch for free in the video description below, and if you like the sound, give it a thumbs up and drop a comment if you'd like, and we'll see you in the next video.